What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode. This is episode number 96 and we're starting today's episode off on the back of our win over Liverpool to make it through to the Champions League final where in the final of the Champions League Chelsea will be taking on... It's Real Madrid. Yep, the most successful team in Champions League history. No one's won it more times than Real Madrid. And after overturning a deficit against Diego Simeone's side with an extraordinary 4-1 victory at the Metropolitano, it is indeed the most successful team in Champions League history, Real Madrid. I'm not going to lie. I'm just going to be honest. I wanted Atletico. And there's no disrespect to Atletico Madrid whatsoever. We've seen in the Diego Simeone era, a couple of La Ligas, uh, Champions League finalists twice. You know, the past decade, they are, you know, a tremendous team. And I often talk about Atletico as one of those sort of underrated big teams, if you know what I mean. They're one of those big boys that don't really get the respect they deserve as a big boy because of Real Madrid and Barcelona's stature. But whoever we would have faced, it would be a tough final, Real or Atletico, but I didn't want to have to take on the most successful team in Champions League history in my first ever Champions League final. Yet our treble dreams live on after our victory over Liverpool, and as we know, with an FA Cup final against the Magpies to come, where we are heavy favourites to retain our FA Cup, we also know we are one win away from the Premier League title as well. And we have a chance to do it in the first game of two in today's episode. Southampton away, St Mary's, my former career mode team who have totally blown up their side in under 24 months. Yeah, I talked about it before. I don't really understand it. I, I mean, it makes no sense to me. And, you know, just to break away from the immersion here, this is something I really hope EA address as the years go by. We left Southampton with an abundance of young talent. Okay, we signed three of them in Deconin, Busquet, and also Jasper Whitehouse. But it's still, and it still was an incredible team that we left behind and have just blown it up. And you look at the team now, and okay, there are some good replacements there. You know, you've got Matias Cunha leading the line. Pedro de la Vega is in there as well, who is so good on this game. It's still a good team, don't get me wrong. But this year, knocked out of the Europa League in the last 16 to Benfica. Okay, not a shock there. Benfica are a fantastic side. But in the Premier League, that's where they've struggled. Right down the bottom of the table. They're going to be safe. But 16th place, really? For a team that we left as a team that were on the cusp of Champions League football in two years, they've totally fallen apart. It's so frustrating when you see a team capitulate out of nowhere and blow things up for no particular reason. And when you look at their formation, it's still 4-4-2, and yet you've got players playing horribly out of position. Why is Ritsu Dalan playing holding mid in this team? It makes no sense. Anyway, first game, St. Mary's, Southampton, and they still do have two of the stars that we had there. Ritsu, of course, despite being played out of position, and this guy, he's now 89 rated as a centre half. And Salisu, now wearing the captain's armband, runs past me 25 minutes in and says, You might have been my gaffer, but you're not anymore. I'm going to stop you celebrating winning the title on my turf. This is my team now. War Prowse has gone. You've gone. This is my team. And Salisu, with the messy esque dribbling, turns Bastoni inside out and scores his first of the year. And I was thinking, are you serious? Like, come on, man. I've beaten Southampton three straight times since leaving them. This is the chance for me to win the title. And I'm a goal down in the early stages. And I haven't had a good start. I needed to find a level up right before the break. And I do so as well. Kai Havertz, what a season this guy is having. Run through one-on-one -on -one with Sam Johnston. And bends it past the former baggy for his 14th goal of the season. I'll be totally honest. Last year, I didn't do very well with Kai. And he barely got any goals for me last year. Year, but 14 in the league alone this season, he's been sublime. So 1-1, it's Kai with the goal. We're back on level terms. In the second half here, Southampton in the first half caused me so many problems. But after that, it was all Chelsea. After the restart, I said, right, go right, guys, this is my former team. This is my former ground. I do not want to lose the chance to win the title today. Because we know it's a case of when, not if. But... I want it done today. We've got an FA Cup final last weekend. We've got a game in midweek. I want to rest all my players against Palace. I want it done today. And with 25 minutes to go in the second half, we'd made a bright start. 
Captain America, Christian Pulisic, his first goal in quite a few games, doubles the score, and we are 2-1 two two up at St Mary's. Yeah, Pulisic stepping in from the left, and, you know, inside forwards, I talk about it a lot, they're so, so crucial in modern-day football. You know, old-school wingers are not as preferable to inverted wingers and inside forwards now in most managers' tactical setups, and in my teams as well, it's the exact same. I love a good inside forward. We've got two brilliant ones in the first 11 here. Pulisic bags our second after Kai scored our leveller and soon afterwards we scored a dagger. Tammy Abraham off the bench for Lautaro Martinez, bends it past Johnston and wraps it up and that would do it. We had an early scare in the first half but we come from behind to win it. Final score, Southampton 1, Chelsea 3. And after losing the chance to win the title at the bridge against Leicester, this is the next best thing for me. Couldn't win it at home against the Foxes, but do win it against my former team, Southampton. You know what? We left Southampton as well back at the end of season three. I, you know, I, I talked about it. This series is all about realism, you know. So to, to move to a, a bigger team and a, a bigger club and a better squad, you know, it, it, it made sense. It was the right thing to do. And I guess, like, the only thing that made me think about, um, you know, the... the the, the comparison I could think of, and it's kind of heartbreaking to think about, but it's like when, you, when you're dating someone or when you, you, know, you have been dating someone for a while and then they move on to someone better, it's a really bitter pill to swallow, but you just have to accept they're doing what's best for them. And I am indeed talking from personal experience here. It hurts, man. It stings. And I'm sure that's how the Saints fans felt when I left St. Mary's to go and join Chelsea. Probably the same as when they felt when Pochettino left the Spurs. But we did it for the good of ourselves, you know. I did it for the good of myself, you know. I wanted to win bigger, bigger honours, compete in bigger, bigger competitions. And for realism purposes, I couldn't really do that with Southampton. You know, competing for a Champions League year after year isn't realistic for Southampton, but it is for Chelsea. I made the right call for realism, but also for me, you know. And <laughs> I guess when you see, like, um, like you know, one of your exes, you know, with someone who, quite frankly, is just better suited to them than you are, stings hurts you know because i've been in that position before but when you do you know when the initial kind of frustration period or the self-pity has worn off after months <laughs> you know you start to realize that person was doing what was best for them you know that they, they realized it wasn't you know you realize it wasn't personal it was nothing against you per se personally but they had to do what was right for them and i kind of feel that's the way it works in football as well and sometimes you know footballers get like a really bad rep for not being loyal as if the club would be loyal to them in the reverse circumstances you know come on now football's a business as we know but when a player leaves a club that have been out for many years, for example, to, to go to a bigger team, earn a bigger paycheck, you know. Sometimes those players get vilified by their former team's fans, and I've never really liked that because if they're moving on to bigger and better things, they're doing what's right for them. And, you know, I understand it's hard, and it's hard to lose, like, a fan favourite, if you will, but, you know, we've seen it loads of times, you know, where a player leaves a club, maybe a boyhood club or a club they spent a few years at to a bigger team, and, and the fans just slate them for it. I, I really I really don't agree with it. You know, the, the, the player is doing, and the person, that's the thing, that the person, the person, the human person is doing what's right for them. And I don't think you can criticise that person for doing that, you know. And it's kind of the same in this save. We left South fans, and it was hard to say goodbye after three great years, but for realism, it was the right thing to do. And again, if it's real life here, you know, it, it's the best thing for the person to do for their own personal life, you know. And I guess the comparison I thought about was, again, dating someone. I've, you know, I've, I've, I've had it happen to me before. And I've also done it to someone else as well. You know, when you're dating someone, you leave them. And then soon afterwards, you're with someone better suited to you. At the end of the day, you can't feel bad about that. And you shouldn't be criticised for it. You know, in life, you are the main protagonist of your own life. You need to do what's best for you, you know. So I guess, I, I don't know what I'm talking about here, to be honest. Anyway, do you know what? I'm just going to move on. We beat Crystal Palace in the following game. I had a backup side out there, apart from Lautaro Martinez, because he's chasing the golden boot right now. But after he scored the first goal right before the break, I took him off at half-time. After Billy Gilmore bagged our second in the second half, it's another clean sheet for Mendy, chasing the golden glove, and it's another win for Chelsea. Doesn't matter anymore. We've already been crowned champion, so while we're celebrating like this again, I don't know. EA, please, in future versions of FIFA, once the title's been won, 
let's not see this again. It's a bit silly and it breaks away from the realism. But even so, we celebrate like we just won the title, even though it was already done. 2-0 the final score against Crystal Palace, but the perfect way to build up to the FA Cup final. Two games to go. We've got a double-digit lead on Liverpool now. The Premier League title is ours. The question is just how many more goals can we score? Can we get close to Man City's record-breaking campaign? Probably not, but you never know. But now the title's in the bag. Can we also add another one in our pursuit of the treble? There's a Champions League final versus Real Madrid the end of season. Before we get there on the weekend, our very next game in a one-game special, Newcastle United. FA Cup final and a chance to retain our domestic double. But that will end today's episode of the Realistic Crimmer, guys. Big fan of you watching. Hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then please do drop a like. Forgive your exes. If they've moved on to someone better, just accept it. It's good for them. It's right for them. Have a great day. <laughs> Much love to you all. And I'll see you in the next episode of the Realistic Career Mode very soon. Let's heartbreak talk, Docs. Come on, man.